Hey there, I'm Aki, and these are some features that were removed from Subnautica, but I think should make a return for Subnautica too. Very early in development, Subnautica had a tool called the Transfuser. With it, you could collect samples of creature DNA and inject them into other creatures to give them some of their powers. To do this, you first had to go out and grab a DNA sample, then bring that back to your base and use the centrifuge, another thing that was removed that you used to be able to build in your base. The centrifuge would allow you to create serums, which you would then be able to inject into other creatures. Using DNA from a reef bag, for example, you could synthesize a growth serum that could massively increase the size of any creature you injected it into. I think something like this could be super fun in Subnautica 2, maybe if we expanded on it and it actually let us give useful traits to creatures, such as scouting out certain materials for us. I think in general, increasing the science aspect of Subnautica and letting us actually come up with new or interesting combinations would be great. If we are able to tame creatures to protect us, for example, we could even enhance them and make them faster, give them more health or let them do more damage so they're more effective at their job. It would of course also be really cool if we could use this to create hybrid creatures, mixing DNA of the ghost leviathan and peeper to create a ghost peeper, for example. But I feel like that would be too much of a hassle to actually implement in the game when it comes to models and coding. Something I think would go really well with this are the specimen analyzer and the botanical analysis machine, both of which were also removed from Subnautica. The specimen analyzer was originally meant to study eggs, while the botanical analysis machine was meant to analyze plants. These were obviously replaced by the scanner, but I think you could easily tie them in with the transfuser and DNA system I just explained. So you would just use these two to make the previous system more complex and interesting. You could use them to store small creatures and analyze them to be able to extract the DNA safely, or find out what you could do with it. Of course you would need similar things to analyze larger creatures, but I think that would be awesome. Imagine building a large creature cage to contain a crab squid or whatever large creatures we have in Subnautica 2, and then use that to analyze the creature. I think that would be a great addition to any base, just like a massive laboratory for analyzing creatures, and I mean, people love the idea of like a research base, I think I've seen a ton of base designs for that in Subnautica, so this would just give us even more stuff to play with. Then again, I love being able to customize everything, so I think I'd love a return of the customizable submarine too. This was cut extremely early in development, but in the Subnautica prototypes, you could expand your submarine in basically any way you want and add more rooms, walls, doors, or basically anything, wherever you like. They tried something like this with the sea truck in Below Zero, but it was obviously heavily restricted with pre-made rooms you could attach in any order, so I think you can definitely go further. If you've seen my Worlds Adrift video, you'll know I'm a massive fan of how you could design your own airships in that game. You would start by designing a frame, which you would then add the hull, engine, sails, and whatever else you wanted onto. I think a modular submarine design like this would be absolutely amazing for Subnautica, especially if we get lots of parts we can use for our own submarine. That way, we basically have endless combinations and can really make it our own submarine. We would start out with one of various hull shape templates that we could alter, and then decide which sections get what kind of hull, glass or armor, and then attach important components like engines, turbines, steering consoles, etc. Like in Worlds Adrift, it would also matter where you place the components, and you'd of course have multiple different components you can choose from. So, depending on where you place the turbines or what engine you use, your submarine might behave differently or be able to reach different speeds, or if you make the hull thicker it might be slower, but be able to withstand more damage or go deeper. Something like this I think would be great, because like this we could make specialized submarines for specific tasks, and tinkering around with different combinations and components would be super fun. This is exactly the kind of stuff I love to do in games. Something else that could make this entire system more fun is bringing back the flooding mechanic for submarines that was removed from Subnautica during early access. Back then, when your submarine lost all of its health, instead of exploding, it would start filling up with water and eventually sink to the ocean floor. With customizable submarines, the placement of bulkheads and size of the rooms will be extremely important, so you can control where the water can go in case your hull gets damaged and you wouldn't immediately just sink. 
I think that would definitely be more interesting than just straight up immediately losing your submarine once the health bar gets to zero. Imagine trying to cross a dangerous area and being attacked by a leviathan. In midst of battle, your hull sustains some damage, but only the back section of your submarine floods, buying you enough time to get out of there if you manage to shut the bulkheads in time. Or you could choose to try and repair that section by going into the damaged section, shutting yourself in and repairing it while the rest of your submarine stays afloat. And last but not least, coming back to how your submarine would handle differently depending on where you place engines, I think bringing back currents would make that a lot more interesting as well. Currents were a feature very early on that would basically just push you around in a certain direction underwater. They were also tied to a buildable current generator that would push things away from it underwater, but that was also scrapped. I actually don't think that one needs to make a comeback since I really can't think of any use cases for it. Uh, but if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments or in my Discord server. There also used to be whirlpools and other underwater events that would cause you to be more careful when exploring. And especially when you have a submarine that could, that could get lost in one of these. And I think that would be amazing. One of my favorite scenes in Pirates of the Caribbean is the massive whirlpool. And now that, but underwater, would be amazing. These currents would effectively soft lock areas, meaning that you would have to equip your submarine with stronger engines to get through. And of course, also think about the placement of components and their weight. They would also, of course, be a factor when you're being attacked or being dragged into a more dangerous area, but I think that would be really cool, even if it would probably be a little terrifying. It's like if you were exploring the dunes with your Seamoth and suddenly got dragged into the void. Terrifying, but fun. I also think those currents cutting off areas would make for a really fun progression system. And yes, this is also borrowed from Walter Drift. They had something called storm walls dividing different areas. Can, can you tell that I really like that game? <laughs> and lastly, I think the terraformer could make a comeback too. It allowed you to modify the terrain before it was removed for performance reasons. So you could dig holes, create hills, or full on docks for your submarine. I think expanding on this and actually using it to change the flora and fauna of a biome, maybe helping it regenerate after something contaminated the biome, would be super interesting. Imagine having to restore a biome by carefully increasing oxygen levels in the water, making sure certain resources and plants are healthy for specific species to be able to come back and finally stabilize the ecosystem. That would be such a great side quest, or maybe even give you access to new resources or creatures you didn't have before which would tie back into the entire progression system. I think it would make the world of Subnautica 2 feel so much more alive and interactive, which is something I really hope we get. Not necessarily with the stuff I proposed here, but I definitely want a more interactive world. What about you? What do you think? <laughs> but yeah, those are the removed Subnautica features I think should make a comeback in Subnautica 2. If you think there are any other removed features that should come back, let me know in the comments down below. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye!